In part five of five of this video series, I'll show you how to test the client and the server using two instances of Visual Studio running side by side. Stay tuned. Now that we have the client coded up, we can test the uh, client server application. Um, the way that you do that is you can um, start up another instance of Visual Studio. So I'm going to right click on Visual Studio down here and select Visual Studio. So I'll, you, you'll need to have two instances of Visual Studio if you want to debug, right? If you want to debug the applications while you're troubleshooting. So um, I have the client server since I just finished coding it up. So I'm going to um, open up the WinForm server. Or I had the WinForm client just finished up. So open up WinForm server. And you'll have two Visual Studio solutions running side by side. I'll put the server solution once it finishes opening up. Uh, a little bit to the right and I'll have the client on the left hand side. Okay so here's our uh, server Visual Studio, here's our client Visual Studio. Alright stagger them just a little bit. Now I'm going to uh, crank up the server. So let's start it. Okay we're running in, in uh, running it in Visual Studio. Okay. And while I'm at it, I'm going to crank up the client too. So let's crank up the client. Okay. So here's our client code. And here's our server right here. Okay. All right, so it's just so it's not too confusing, I'll minimize these uh, Visual Studio. Okay, now once we get one client um, tested with a server, we can actually uh, crank up another client, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll crank, crank up multiple clients and test, which is the whole purpose of having a multi-threaded uh, client server application. So right now we have our server. Uh, it's not running. Uh, the application's running, okay, but the server has not started as far as waiting for incoming connections. We got zero uh, connected clients. And uh, I really, I'm looking at this code now, right, and what I see off the bat is that this uh, connected clients field should not be editable. It should be read-only, so I can go back and actually change that. And in fact, while I have it, the code running, let me just uh, pull up the server. Um, stop the uh, application. So I'm stopping the server and I can go to the form design and select that uh, command or select that text box and make it read only. Okay, so that's the first thing I see that needs to be changed. True. Save that code and then start the server again. It should start up faster now that it's compiled. <clears throat> okay. Minimize that window. So again, now that's grayed out, so that looks good. Okay. I can also see it's it's selected by default, right? So I could also make sure that it's not selected. I'll go back and make that change later. So let's start the server. So the server is ready for incoming connections. Let's go to the client, and we're listening on uh, port 5000, and since this is multi-homed, it's listening on every IP address, including localhost, so we'll connect the client, and it connected, okay? So here is um, from the client. This is being printed out by the server. Hello from client. This is what I sent, and... This is the reply, receive from server, server received, hello from client, ready to do your bidding. Okay, now let's, pra let's uh, try to send a command. First, I'll send a command from the server. So, um, hello there. 
So send the command and it got a command. You see hello there. Okay. And let's know now let's try sending one from the client. I'm ready to do what you ask. Okay, so it received it. So now let's crank up another client and see if we can connect multiple clients. Okay, so the way you got to go track this down is in Visual Studio, it outputs the code uh, to the bin directory. So let's open up the project, go into WinForm Demo. So the, go to the client folder, wherever you're, you stored your um, client project, go to that location, look for the bin directory, and then it, um, it should be in the debug folder at this point, and then just open up another client by just clicking it. Okay, so this one's running in Visual Studio. This one I, we just cranked up outside of Visual Studio. We'll see how far this goes, and we'll connect. So uh, we got two clients connected, and I'll just type something different here from this client. Hey man, how's it going? Send the command. All right, so like I said, because of the default case in the process client requests over here in the server and the process client transactions method in the client, the baseline functionality is that of like an echo server, right? You can uh, add additional commands to to the client and to the server. Now, if I send a message back, you watch this now. So I have two clients. I have the server running. If I send a command now, the way it's programmed, okay, when I type in a command, bow before me, you bots. Send the command, both servers get the command or both clients get the command from the server. So it broadcasts, okay? Now let's test uh, connecting and disconnecting. Okay, so if I disconnect, um, we see there's no exceptions, right? We're just getting the messages. But because we have, because over here and over here, we have uh, the uh, reader.readline kind of blocking, waiting for the next uh, command to come from either the client or the server, if I stop the server, we're going to see both of these uh, client. We should see we should see both of these clients disconnect. So let's try that. Stop the server. Okay, so we're getting these reports of these exceptions, right? Uh, and this is normal because we're forcing the server to stop. Okay, so it says at the bottom here, reported finished processing client request. So we have two of these reports because we had two clients connected. And we had two clients being processed in two separate threads over here. Okay, now we're going to have to work with our uh, count. Okay, the count is off. We see this right here, right? It says connected clients negative two. We're going to have to troubleshoot that to make sure that the connected clients uh, value is valid whenever we disconnect. Okay. Now, uh, but if we start the server again, okay. Well, what I notice here is that when I start the server, this value is not being updated. So that's another point of issue that uh, we're going to have to take a look at. But it's running. It's waiting for incoming connection. So if I connect, then uh, it connect, they connect again. Okay. So that that uh, is pretty stable. If I send a command, it'll read it, right? I'll just say I am your servant command me oh great one so send command okay so you have to use scroll bars to scroll down I am your servant so the the server got that one now also notice too that when this these clients connected okay when this client connected this connected clients was not updated so I need uh, so let's just let's uh, okay so that pretty much tells me where that's at 
when a client connects, I'm not incrementing the client, uh, the connected client's variable. So that's what I need to do. Whenever a client connects, I need to increment that variable. So I'm going to stop the server again, and I'll uh, I'll keep the clients running. So let me just open up Visual Studio, go to WinForm server. Okay, I've stopped the server. I need to stop the app. So I'm going to do that. And I need to go to the form one code. All right, so coming down, um, I'm going to, uh, it's going to be in the listen for incoming connections, right? So here we have the, remember we got uh, in the listen, this is in the server code now. So we're going back to the server. This is listening for incoming connections method. We have a listener, we create the listener, we start the listener, we send a status to the text box. And then uh, we're, we stay in this while loop, this keep going while loop, right? Uh, so then we have another status message to the text and then we listen, we block right here. As soon as that, um, as soon as that uh, uh, accepts the incoming connection, it's going to start process client request. So let's go into process client request. And we're incrementing the variable here. So let's run this and just see what happens, okay? Uh, client count, so let's start one more time. So it's at zero. Let's take, let's select one of our clients. Okay. And connect. Okay, well, I have to have the server. So we had an exception over here, right? Because the server's not running. So that's normal. It says no connection could be made because the target machine actively refused it. So we got to start the server. <clears throat> Our connected clients is at zero. We connect. Okay, it's not incrementing. So the problem uh, piece of code. Oh, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Okay. The client count is being incremented, but I am not updating the window. So we're going to have to stop this. We'll stop this one more time. Now notice when I stopped that, right, there was a client connected. Let's take a look at that client. Uh, and it said, yeah, hey, the socket was forcibly, uh, an existing connection was forced to be, be closed. Right, so when I stopped the program, it just forcibly closed. So this is normal. And the client is still running. It just reported the exception here. So let's go to the server, and here we're going to have to add a um, connected client's text box, right? But we're going to have to use the invoke ex because this method is running in a separate thread. So now we're going to have to set the value of uh, cctv, okay? cctb dot text equals and we're just going to report the client count S client count so client count uh, dot to string we're just going to set it to that value okay so we set it to the value now every time a client connects it will set that to the client, so it's going to report that value. Okay. Uh, all right. So, client count plus equals one. Uh, client lit. Okay. So now let's start the server again. These are some of the testing. Uh, these aspects of testing, even though you code up like the server and the client, and you run it and you test it as much as you can, until you actually hook these guys up to each other. There's not a lot of testing that you can do that's meaningful, okay, until you get to this point. Okay, so um, it would be nice, actually, uh, to have maybe a button to clear this uh, uh, status text box every once in a while. So let me connect. Oh, I got to start the server. I always forget that. Okay, start the server. Connect. Okay, now we have one for connected client connect to now let me disconnect here 
So we've decremented that value and disconnect. Now we're at zero. Okay. So if I stop the server, okay, fine. There's no connected clients, so this number remains zero. I'll connect again. Oh, I gotta start. Start the server. <laughs> connect one, two, and we can we can have as many of these clients running as we want. Now, this is only testing on the local machine, um, but this will work as long as you have the IP address. In that particular case, you know, the server is going to work fine. There's no modifications needed. You set the port, okay? But the client, you'd have to type in the actual IP address of the server that it's running on, right? So let's see what happens. Let's do some out-of-bounds testing. Let's see what happens. I'm not... So here's some of the shortfalls of the code right now. The ports, I'm not checking for valid range of the integer, right? On the port. I mean, it's going to be integer to parsent, but there are certain ports that are, you know, that you shouldn't use, and there's a range of port values for a machine, right? Uh, for the IP address, let's see what happens if we try. Remember, we had some code in there that it's going to, let's just enter an invalid IP address right there. We disconnect. That's not going to make a difference. Now, if we try to connect, it should say, uh, hello from client. Okay, so what happened is, uh, it should have. I don't think I'm printing that to the thing because this is an IP address. Uh, it tried. Let me let me go take a look at this code because let me disconnect. Here's the, that's not a valid IP address right there. If I connect. All right, I'm gonna to have to figure out what's going on there, okay? That should be reading that value. So we can go take a look at that code. But this is the type of testing, okay, that you need to do, okay? So this is how you test. You can test by running two instances of Visual Studio side by side, one running the server, one running the client. Um, or you can actually go into the debug uh, folder for each of the projects, the bin debug, and, and crank them up like that to test them without running it through Visual Studio. All right. Uh, but that's it. That's how you test. OK. So the code uh, is available, once again, um, at uh, github.com slash pulpfreepress. And thank you for joining me. So I hope uh, you found these uh, this project helpful and uh, useful. And if you have ideas for uh, any videos that you need or special topics, please hit me up at rick at pulpfreepress.com. That's rick at pulpfreepress.com. Uh, I'm glad that you joined me today. Have a great day.